All right, so here on this screen uh, where I left off, you see at the bottom we've got these various icons. Uh, let's s look in detail here also your user icon. So this little person. What you see on this screen is your particular account, which right now is very boring and it hasn't been set up. Um, this goes back to what I've said on all the other networks that um, how are you going to get followers uh, if your account doesn't look complete? So at some point you need to go in here and, and edit your profile as complete as possible. So if I look at edit your profile, photo, I want the photo of the business or, uh, or my product or whatever makes sense for you because I don't want the generic person icon. <coughs> if you want to change the name, the full name, here they call it name instead of full name. If you want to change the full name, there it is. If you'd like to change the username, there it is. Now this again, if that name's already taken, if that username's already taken, you, you won't be able to take it. I mean, if you give up your username for something else, someone else may take it. Who knows? So be careful about changing those items. You have a spot for a website and a biography. So this website um, could be your home page. It could be a link over to your Etsy shop. It could be whatever, a link anywhere that you want. This will be an active link that people will see in your biography. One reason to put a website here is to drive traffic back to the website. Your website might give you the most control uh, over your content. When we use these networks, it's our content. We own it, yes, but we have to follow the rules of the network. And Instagram, they've had this weird battle for years uh, regarding nudity. Well, nudity like, you know, nudity like breastfeeding and such. They shut down uh, pictures like that or, you know, even they've shut down photos of like, you know, famous paintings of, of famous nudes or, or statues. So there's some automated system in place and this is the issue that we, we're on all of these networks and there's these, all these rules that we don't know about that we've, but we've agreed to follow by creating the account. So when you've got your own website and you drive traffic back to your own website, you have the most control. You've got a spot for a biography. And here's another spot where you have some place to write and to help you get, uh, help you get found. As we talked about on the previous networks, when people search, they uh, search keywords or hashtags or whatever, and if you've got those keywords and such in your biography, you could be found. So as I've said before, you want to complete your profile as much as possible. So put search, as many search terms? Not really just search terms, real sentences. Uh -huh. You don't want to try to game the system by just putting a bunch of keyword search terms. Then that'll actually hurt you. You want real sentences and organically have the keywords in the sentence. Is that the same with Pinterest as well? All the networks yeah. are like that. They don't want you to simply put a dictionary full of right. keywords. Always fill out your profile completely. Who wants to follow? Okay, ladies, I'm going to ask you, you're a little bit distracting, please. If you need to talk with each other, please, uh, maybe during the breaks. Who wants to follow an uh, empty account? And then regarding bio, complete sentences um, with keywords to help you get found. So what we've talked about on the previous networks also apply here, and you want to um, think in terms about always trying to get found and keywords or buzzwords or jargon of your industry, but writing it in a way that makes sense as a complete sentence. And there's a limit, I think, of about 140 or 160 characters. You can't write a whole essay. 
So you need a couple of sentences there that make sense. There's a spot for your email, your phone number, and gender if you'd like to specify. And all of those are inside of the edit profile. So what else this screen has, this profile screen, uh, it's, t it's asking me, it may, it may ask you, would you like to turn on notifications? And this is what I said earlier about people can like your, uh, comment, uh, your stuff, they can comment, etc. And probably you would, want, you would want to turn that on. I do want to know when someone likes my photo and comments and so forth. Uh, I don't think we're at the point here, most of us, where we're so popular that we're getting so many likes and it's distracting. Uh, or debilitating so that can be changed in the settings and I would want to um, I would want to turn that on to keep up to date then I see posts followers following I haven't made any posts yet which would be videos or photos I don't have followers and I'm not following like I talked about on the other networks we're often trying to get as many followers as possible because only about 1% of our followers are really the ones that are going to follow through or be a real follower and such. So always try to build followers because a very low amount of them, a very low percentage of them, will actually follow through. I'm trying to get sales, I'm trying to get views to my website, I'm trying to get subscribers to my newsletter, whatever I'm trying to do. So if I've got a thousand followers, 1% of that is only 10, 1% uh, of 100 is 1, and that sounds very low, yes, but think about it in those terms, that's why we're trying to build followers. Your content may be amazing, and you're closer to 25% or 50%. And that still means that only half of people are really uh, going to follow through because it's so easy to click that like and it's pretty easy to reply and it's easy-ish to follow but suddenly it's so hard to click buy so the more followers you have the more percentage of real results you might get so this is the profile screen you see some uh, little options up here as well. I think on, on iPhone, it's some of these icons are a little different. If they're in a different sort of place, it's the same thing, but in a different spot. You can view your icons. Uh, you can view your photos as a big icon, so it'll, it'll be right here. You can view it as a list, so you can view it faster. And then you've also got photos that have tagged you or accounts that have tagged you. That's similar to that other screen. So I can see here who has tagged me, who might be a potential customer. And then here I see the bookmarks. So like I said about bookmarks, you like something, you can bookmark it, and you'll get a list of it here to come back to it. Reconnaissance and all of that. So this is a very useful screen. Um, you can get it always there on the bottom right. If we then go over to the next screen, this little heart that's likes, uh, I'll make the notes over here from right to left, bottom menu, profile, likes, share, search, and home. Options are here, a list of all your content, likes, uh, a list of all the all, co all content <coughs> you've liked, and a list of likes from others, from those that you have followed. This is the part that, th this is the link that will get you embarrassed. Uh, 
or fired because from this screen of likes so if you're right here in this likes screen notice at the top it says you and following so anything that you have liked will be stored here so okay great I'll see what I've liked I'll see what I've liked my business has liked well if I click on following I don't have anyone that I'm following at the moment but that is gonna tell me what the activity is of who I am following this will tell me John liked this photo from Janet it'll tell me Janet followed Bill it'll tell me all the activity of who I am following if it's public so your followers can look at this your followers can go to their likes screen and then click following and the activity that you've done will show up there for them to see. So, so you, you is everything that you have posted? You the business. Have posted? Or no, what you have liked. Oh, uh -huh. That you the business have liked. And then following is seeing what, you, what your connections have liked and followed and such. So this is list uh, and a list of likes from others so the the value of this so again if you know that your stuff is going to be public and hopefully you're not liking anything embarrassing uh, especially from your business you're you're fine but the purpose of this following screen is great to recon the competition to reconnoiter <coughs> the competition to scope out the competition and see what they're doing and see what they've liked and see what's interesting and get more info question yes. um, on this if I like linked Instagram to uh, Facebook then it's just asking me Instagram I'd like to manage your pages not know how it is we you will eventually say yes if you're trying to link Facebook then yes Facebook is going to want to be able to to manage it to be able to make a post or add text and such so you most likely will add yes to that and that's if like you don't have a business Facebook page and the personal that's when it gets a little tricky unfortunately I might not have the best answer there because like I said for myself I have it separate I have a certain email address for all my personal stuff and a certain email address for business stuff so you, you have to be careful here if you've got a personal one on Facebook but then you've got a business one on Instagram something weird will probably happen with the connection so if you already connected it it can be disconnected but um, it, it just depends yeah if it's mostly all going to be business then it would probably be just fine to connect it yes how do you manage your, um, your name In but in in you where? Set up a, an account. Let's say on Facebook. And you know how they. I, mean, I know what they like, but mm -hmm. again, from a from a smart standpoint, smart approach. It, it has to be about the business name. So you want to fill in the business name, not the personal name. That's that's going to be the smarter way. In those rules that everyone agrees to, but no one reads, you know, in there it says you're going to use Facebook or any of these networks the right way. And, the, and if you don't use it the right way, they can shut you down. And the right way is that a business is going to have a business name. And a person is going to have a personal name. And there's a gray area in between, but really, uh, most of these networks, unfortunately, are guilty until proven innocent. So if you make some sort of mistake and someone uh, reports you for whatever thing, and uh, the system is so auto automated because there's so many hundreds of millions of users, they're going to err on the side of covering themselves and just shut you down for 12 hours or something. In our case, would you, would you use Victor's fake, Victor first name, or Victor's yeah. first name, bakery last name? Just as an example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these likes, um, check out the competition. Uh, this will give me, uh, this will keep me up to date with what the uh, other people are doing. This little plus at the bottom here to share, this is a whole big talk that we'll get to in just a moment. Um, 
this is where you'll be able to create a new photo or video or upload one from your library. So I would allow that. But let me just back up for a moment. I'll get to the share screen in a moment. Create a new video or photo or upload an existing video or photo. Search. So this little, uh, this is the problem with many apps nowadays. They're so, this, these screens, even though they get bigger and bigger, these screens have these little icons to work with, and a lot of the time they're not labeled, because there's very little bit of space on screen. So sometimes, I don't know what this icon means, I don't know what it does, and it's okay usually to click on it and it'll tell you what to do. On a regular computer, you can usually hover your mouse over something and you get a little pop-up that tells you what it is, but not on an app. You kind of have to explore it a little bit. So what I'm getting at, uh, what would you say this icon is right here? Search. Search. Physically, what would it be? Magnifier. Magnifying glass. Don't some of you see that it's the, it's the profile of a little bird, that little bird that goes yeah. down and touches the water? No, no, no one sees that? Well, this is what I'm saying, that some of these icons are obvious and some of them are not. If I see this plus, how many of you would have thought, well, that's a way to, you know, share a new photo? I don't know, the plus doesn't quite, to me, feel like that, but that's what they use as that icon. What about this one up here? What is this icon? No idea. Uh, a banner. It could be a banner, yeah, like one of those uh, banners in the gym mm -hmm. that, we won, that we won the big game. Well, it's, I guess it's a bookmark, you know, one of those classic little bookmarks you put in the book. So it's the bookmark. And some of these, you know, nine dots and three dots, some of them get a little bit more abstract. So this is a different view for your photos, a grid view or a list view. And what I'm getting at is it's okay to, you know, press the different icons and what does this do? What does that do? So then you, you kind of learn as you go. And this is the challenge of most of these apps because they're not often labeled. So anyway, the magnifying glass. Um, in the magnifying glass, this is the uh, this is search. This is a very powerful screen. It's very cluttered. Uh, there's a lot to look at and do here on this little search screen, the little magnifying screen. But it's one of the most powerful screens because uh, this is part of the way that you can build your followers. So let's look at let's spend some time here. This is um, sort of like a what's hot screen. This is a suggestion screen. Um, and it's also search for hashtags or people. So it's, this is, it does a lot of things in one screen. And all of these are valuable for building followers. So this will be a variation of what we talked about before. Let me, uh, let me show you the example. So what it's showing at the moment is a bunch of little photos and it says watch videos you might like well it doesn't know what I might like yet because I just created the account and I don't have anything filled in so it's kind of giving you random things and it thinks here I want to watch someone with a lot of tattoos getting washed down that's <laughs> <laughs> true I guess that's fine that's stupid so it doesn't know what I want yet and there, so it gives you random that's things funny. Okay, now going, scrolling down, okay, well, maybe I want uh, laughing babies or food or shoes. So it doesn't know what I really care about at the moment. But as I start to follow accounts and everything, it's going to um, suggest more items and uh, maybe it'll get useful eventually. So the way that this would be useful is um, based on my business. Okay, Victor's Bakery. Here's an example of something food-related at least, or this one. It's not exactly baked goods or whatever, but let's say it's food related. Here's how this would be valuable for us. You browse this what's hot view, then you see something food related or related to your business. 
So you tap it to view it, and it'll show you here that Sassy Kitchen uploaded this um, uh, on, on the 25th of August. It's very popular. So this uh, there's this food. Below it, I see some stats. This has been liked 10,000 times. And it's got a bunch of comments, 47 comments. And uh, this is not to make you jealous. This is to give you the idea. Here's what you need to do. When you identify a photo or a video related to your business, you then have the ability to check who are all of these people that like or commented on this. Let me then mark it to them directly. They seem to be interested in food. So GK Stories wrote, loved it. And Melina Hammer wrote something. So all of these people, I can see. Who, who are they? If I click on View Comments, here's all of the comments. And here's all of the accounts. So I can go in deeper and say, OK, Maxine N. Waneri. I can click her profile and see everything about her profile. I can then, uh, in her case, she has a way to email her directly. Not everyone has that. But she has a follow button, so I can follow her. I'll click follow. And then so now Maxine got a notification in her, in her notification screen that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. So this is what we've said on previous days, that you do have to be active. You do have to be social on a social network. <laughs> So the idea is um, find or yeah find a popular post tap it to view details tap to view comments or likes on it to identify who the likers or commenters are. Then visit their profiles, so tap on their profile, visit their profile, and do your next step. Your next step is one of these possibilities over here. We mentioned these on the other networks. Again, a lot of this stuff overlaps over and over because they're all social networks. You can either like any of their posts. You can either comment on any of their posts. You can either share any of their posts. And I have these written in this order because they have this value. One, two, three. The, the number one there is the least valuable. It's not bad, but it's the least valuable. You went in, you liked someone's post. The point of any of these actions, visit their profile and do your next action. I usually call them action. The point of any of these actions is that they create an alert for that person. The problem with the, any of these social networks is no one knows how great you are. No one knows you exist. So no one knows to follow you. Even if you post something new every single day, word of mouth is not going to help you. No one knows you exist. So if you take the first step to be active and start liking and commenting and sharing, these other accounts get a notification that you exist. And the least that you can do is that like. It's not the worst or bad or anything like that. It's just that that's the least thing, because a like is so transitory. You click like, what's next? Move on. The next level up is a comment. Yes? Uh, could you tell me, could you show us what share looks like? Yeah, I'm going to go into detail on all of these in just a moment. So the comment um, is the next level up of value, because I took a moment to write something. It may simply be a thumbs up emoji. Or, or a real sentence or whatever, but it's the next level up of effort because I had to tap the comment button and then I wrote what I needed to write. So that's a higher level. It shows more value, uh, that you value that person a little bit more, their content. 
the share on Instagram is one of the weird ones. It's a little bit more obvious and makes more sense on the other networks, but on share on Instagram, it's 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 a little different. So let's say I'm looking at at Maxine's photos, and I tap on one of the photos. The share is going to be this. What is this icon? Paper airplane. Paper airplane. Other people would say a compass triangle or something. That's a paper airplane, and that represents share. So who would have thought paper icon, paper paper plane means share? So the share on Instagram. That's that's the like, that's the comment, that's the share. This is a little cartoon speech bubble. So under every photo there is share. And the reason that it's weird is because then you share it, you send it to specific people. Whereas every other network, you click share or reshare or retweet, whatever the network calls it, this one is going to share it to who you choose, your followers. So this is spreading her photo to my followers, my connections. It's very different than the other networks because that's in the other networks it's like a copy and paste or like forwarding to more people. Here I have to send it to individual people or those that I've put together into a group. So this one's a little bit weirder, a little bit trickier. I might not do this one as much on Instagram like it is a lot easier to do on the other networks. Would that lady know how many people you shared with? If you um, just do one, would that be like legit? At the very least, they'll get the notification that your con that her content was shared. I'm not exactly sure if it lets them know uh, how many got shared to, but I, I, they can probably check that. Yes. But this is the next higher level up of value because now I'm helping. This is going viral. I'm helping this spread to more people. Mm -hmm. So. It if you only view any, you don't like comment or share, it's not like LinkedIn. They don't know you're in there. Exactly. So that, that would be lurking. You're not doing anything active. You're just looking. No one gets notified of that. But once you do any of these actions, they get notified. The fourth action, the highest action, the highest value action is follow. I did that right away with Maxine. I clicked follow. There's of course downsides to the follow because when you do when you click follow, that means I want to see everything that they're posting. So if I had followed them because of one of their food related posts, and they're usually posting political stuff that I don't want to hear about, I'm gonna hear about it because I chose to follow them. So be careful. That's why this is the fourth action. Following an account means I want to see all their stuff, all their content, even if I didn't actually think I wanted to. Now, I want all of these myself. I want likes and comments and shares and follows. And on social media, oftentimes, you get what you give. True. But not 100%. So if I liked 50 different pictures of 50 different people, that does not mean I'm suddenly going to get 50 likes back. I might get 40 or 10 or 2 or 50. There's no way to know. It's up to the person. All I've done is alerted them that I exist. It's still up to them to then reciprocate. That means right now my profile is empty. They have nothing to like. Right now I have nothing posted as a picture. They have nothing to comment on. So would you say I try to do these actions as soon as possible? <coughs> No, nope. I don't have anything to reciprocate. Why am I going to get a follow back if I have nothing to show about what my account is? How is any of my stuff going to get shared if I have no stuff to share? How am I going to get commented on anything if I have nothing to comment on? And how will I get likes if I have nothing for them to like? So all of these actions here, you want to do them, but after you've established your profile. You get what you give do these actions to get these actions. But have an active profile first. Have that biography filled in. Have that logo. 
set up, uh, have your website address there, have one or two or three or five pictures to show what your business is about. Instagram, in theory, the, the thing about it is it's instant. It doesn't have to be an amazingly composed photo. It has to be instant. I'm going to take a photo of this product, share it. I'll, we'll see how to post in a moment. Take the photo, put the filter, upload it. Do another one, do another one, do another one. Instantly being active and all of that. Um, so I mentioned it on the other networks, like let's say Google+. Plus. When we talked about Google+, Plus, I talked about the value of communities. Some communities you have to ask to join, and some of them let you in right away. Well, if you try to join a community that says ask to join, someone, a moderator, is going to go check out your profile to see what is this person about and why would we let them in our community. Somewhat here too, why would someone give you any of these actions if you have nothing to offer? So that sharing button in the middle, we'll get to that one in a moment, that sharing button is, is putting your content. And therefore, Maxine, she got a notification if, if she was paying attention, wherever she is in the world, she got a notification. Victor's Bakery liked your, your photo. I'm going to click like right there. It's up to her then to say, who's Victor's Bakery? Do they have anything interesting? Will I follow them because their biography speaks to me? Do they have a product I want? So I need an active profile. Victor? Yes. How, does it cost to have that e email on there? No, it's just an option to turn on somewhere in the options to allow that to be visible or not. Yes, exactly. So be careful about that. Yes. Is, is there a minimum activity level, like on the other networks they mentioned? You know, you should post, you know, on blogs at least four or five hundred words per month at the minimum. I mean, is there an activity level you would recommend? As a well, on any of these networks, really, um, I, I give um, activity levels. I give basic, intermediate, advanced. On any of these, the most basic is once per week. Any, any uh, kind of post at all, once per week. You know, length of text and all of that, that sort of doesn't matter, but it's going to be about your content. Uh, intermediate, you know two to three times per week and advances daily something every day but that's a lot of work a lot of effort but some of the biggest accounts they are that active and I would say for most of us something new every week is really the baseline that most of us could do um, to get started to start to build your followers I would try to put you know how people can see your content as a grid right here when they visit your account for the first time um, just, let me just go to an example over here uh, okay when they go to your uh, account for the first time depending on the size of your screen so there's no there's no answer for everyone you see only three things are visible right away when someone goes to your account they can of course scroll up and see even more but I would say at the very least to have three things posted before trying to get uh, these followers. Because if people only have a moment to, to check out your account, they, they're going to go to your home screen here. They're going to see your logo. This account has 4,000 posts and uh, bio and such and three photos. And maybe based on that, they decide to follow or not. Let's see another one over here. So same thing here. Quick information at the top some photos there if they're interested they'll scroll down and then decide to like a photo follow etc
No, only if you follow. So, these actions in this order is what I would think about doing. Maybe the focus more, however, on number two. If you're trying to get followers, and you follow a bunch of accounts, the big downside is you're going to see a lot of content that maybe you don't really want to see. So I would reserve the follow to those that you of accounts you really want to, you really agree that you want to see their content. Likes, like I said, are the minimal level. Those are very transitory. You don't get as much result out of them because maybe you'll get a like back and then they move on and move on with their life and mm -hmm. they never follow you or buy anything. Mm -hmm. Share is a little trickier because first you have to have connections. First you have to build followers. And then you're going to share their post to someone else's, you know, to, to your followers. And I think it's a little more hassle than the other networks. So I think commenting is probably going to give you the best results. And that's what I've seen on personal and business accounts that I manage. Mm -hmm. That when you go to different pictures and videos and everything and then you comment, the that account sees a notification Victor's Bakery commented on your photo and if you do that often but not in an obnoxious you know stalking sort of way uh, it'll be in people's minds oh Victor's Bakery keeps liking my stuff keeps commenting what are they about oh they're interesting let me follow and then maybe eventually that results in a sale that comment can be like you just you know, thumbs up it could be thumbs up it could be great job or, yeah you know, it doesn't have to be a, a any yeah, any positive thing, yeah. yeah. And I would recommend all of this to be positive, you know, yes. keep it all positive. So any anything, a thumbs up or, or one word or one sentence is enough of a comment to then get on their radar and then it's up to them to follow through. Because eventually I want all of this. I want people to like my photos. That's nice, but I want more. Okay, I want people to comment on my photos. That helps me identify who might be a more active and real account. I want shares. I want my photos to go off to more people to go viral. I want follows because the more follows I have, the more the higher that one percentage becomes of real sales. Because ultimately it all is my ultimate goal. Whatever your ultimate goal is, a sale. Maybe I'm an author on a website, I want people to read my stories. Maybe I'm a painter, I want people to simply appreciate my paintings on my website. Maybe I'm a nonprofit organization and I want donations or volunteers. Whatever your ultimate goal is, that's, or conversion, which is the buzzword, the jargon. Whatever your ultimate conversion is, the more of these other actions you do, the closer it gets to the ultimate goal. Because again, a like is so easy for your customers to do, and a, and a comment and a follow is so easy, but then suddenly the, the donate button gets very hard to use, or the buy now button is very difficult to use. Let's look a little bit more at this uh, share screen, then we'll take our second break. I see a bunch of this stuff that's hot, I see videos, great, etc. At the very top, uh, you would also see the uh, you would see stories and live shares. We'll look at stories and live shares after the break. But uh, so there's these various things that are either live or that they're stories. So this is just another way to identify things that are that are active and like the other networks there are verified accounts notice these blue check marks so this is the real Khloe Kardashian not an imitator and uh, so that is the same sort of thing uh, I don't know let me click on bad gal Riri let's see what she's got here so uh, is this the Rihanna so She's got here a, a story. We'll go into details uh, about what stories are a little bit later, but she shared a story here. So this has a little bit less of a value of 
the like the other ones about who liked and who commented. So we'll get back to stories later. I'm sorry. So the blue ones are they're actually the individual like if it's a um, celebrity. It's the official, official representative so. of that celebrity or news organization or government or whatever so it's a verified account last thing then we'll take a break at the very top we've got search that search button I click search and we'll see we have different ways to search and here it's asking would you allow would you allow Instagram to access your location you can approve it or deny it one reason why you might want to allow it is because there is a way to search in a location so if I'm trying if I'm a local business and I'm trying to find people locally here in San Diego that would care about my business I would want to allow it to access my location if I have a product that I sell all over the world all over the US I might not need to search locations but I'll say allow so it gives me that extra option this search screen then has top results, results of people, results of tags, hashtags, and results of places. So you see search is a very complex screen. It used to be two separate screens, but now it's all one screen. Because what you can also do with search is uh, search hashtags, people, places, get top results and what you're gonna search for here is similar to what we saw on the previous screen to identify people that really care about your product your business your niche whatever and then reach out to them like their stuff comment on their stuff follow their account so here under search I'm going to search for the term cookies I search cookies I get these top results I'll get back to those later but I see accounts they should call it accounts instead of people because these would be people or businesses I get accounts that have cookie either in the full name in the username in the biography I get all of these accounts related to cookies what how this matters to you is people will search for things on Instagram so Here's the idea of these keywords being in your full name or username or biography, but not simply stuffing keywords into the biography, real sentences. Then we've got tags. So here, this is cool because it gives us suggestions for hashtags. Mm -hmm. When we were talking about Twitter, the question was, is there a place where I can look up all the hashtags? Yes and no. Here on Twitter is the same sort of thing. Yes, this will give you suggestions for hashtags, but they may not be the hashtags that you care about or your companies care about. So I search hashtags with cookies, and it's recommending all of these. Cookies. Hashtag cookies. 13 million posts. Hashtag cookies and cream. Half a million posts. Cookie swap. Cookie. Cookies art. Cookie snack. and then places so here are local places uh, with with cookies in their in their name that are local local ish we have Uncle Biff's killer cookies over on University Avenue but then we've got milk jar cookies over in Wilshire Boulevard Los Angeles Didi Rice cookies also in Los Angeles cookies tonight in Mission Valley Golden Gate fortune cookies so from these hashtags I can click the hashtag and then it'll show me all of these photos and hopefully this is safe for work yeah. but it's gonna show all of these photos related to cookies which then I can go identify now who wants to eat a green cookie it's not San St. Patrick's Day that cookie looks sick 
So you can go then look at um, all of these hashtags, d photos of cookies, and then you go do the actions. You go like, you go comment, you reply, you you be active, and then you'll get some of that in return. But unfortunately, unfortunately, you don't get what you give I in the same proportion. I might have liked 50 photos of cookies, and I only get two follows back. That's just the way it is, and that's one of the one of the things you need to do when you, you run social media. It's not just you posting something every week. It's you being active and going and checking out other people's content and liking and replying and get the ball rolling and get activity and get fame and it builds upon itself and it's work. That's why there's the the job of social media manager. Someone in the company perhaps focused on that to run social media. that is search. We'll take a break and when we come back we'll look at home and then we'll look at posting and ideas of posting and how it works and all of that. It's about 1140-ish. Let's take a break until 1150 and then we'll go on.